around because we were part of the mobility workshop. Um, so, um, briefly, um, our passionate group was a gathering technologists, urbanists, uh, architects, engineers, uh, sea suits, and we ran experiments and tried to, to foresee um, a possible and desirable future for, for African mobility. And we had uh, an horizon which was 2030. Um, so, that was quite exciting. Um, every day, from Nairobi to Accra, from Casablanca to Cape Town, from a mega city like Cairo to rural area in Zimbabwe, Millions of movements uh, of goods and people are taking place, right? Um, as we know, and these movements are like a heartbeat. Uh, if you imagine the sea, if you imagine a rural area, and those movements, it's like a, it's like a blood flow to a certain extent. Um, but these uh, these movements are also um, sort of like constrained by some challenges when it comes, whether it's transportation, uh, for transportation or for logistics. Uh, but we believe that as people evolve, so do mobility needs as well. Uh, so, within our group, we focused on uh, what is at stake, some current constraints, and how successful local experiments could actually be scaled. We considered major trends impacting movements such as infrastructure, travel modes, technology, and we imagined plausible scenarios for more sustainable and efficient mobility on the continent. So, here's what we believe. We came up with two scenarios. One called the hub city. Um, it has to do with mobility powered by connectivity between supply and demand, uh, making information available in real time in an affordable way. So a person requiring a service, so the person on the, on the left side is requiring a service, and she's sitting on a chair because she actually doesn't have to move, right? Um, she could simply connect with an individual. Another individual would be riding a smart vehicle. So it's the, the guy in the middle with a green shirt. This individual will be riding a smart vehicle, and the city itself will actually have a myriad of small hubs uh, where products um, would actually be made available. And all those, those, this hub network would actually be, every hub will be at a, within a, a two kilometer radius from anyone, from anyone in the city. So, It's actually quite exciting to imagine how the city would evolve around people's transportation needs. Um, another scenario, which is the network cities, um, would actually combine, um, combine network cities, mobility systems, um, micro freight, on-demand distribution, transit nodes, smart devices, mobile payments. And this way, Amina and her family would actually enjoy a um, more livable city and an enjoyable, enjoyable commute as well. Um, in both cases, multimodal transport systems will actually become the norm. And we believe that those will include walkable paths and cyclable lanes as well. Public transport will probably evolve to be more sustainable, safer, and user-friendly as well. And because mobility and physical spaces are intertwined, as you can see, our cities will probably change you have to improve to include easy to reach providers or services and products as well, as and when people need them. We believe that mo mo modular vehicles will be seen everywhere, such as the Africar, a lightweight solar powered vehicle providing door to door mobility in both rural and urban areas as well. So we strongly believe as a group that the future of mobility in Africa is underway, that it will be powered, um, that it will actually power accessibility to education, to health, to implement, to food, and so on and so forth. So what's next? That's a big question. Well, our detailed scenarios will actually be written down, and they will be shared on the Africa for, Tea, Africa for Tech platform. And maybe in 15 years, we'll actually reconvene and check whether or not we're accurate in our provisions. Thank you. Wow. Thank you.